Okay, good afternoon, my viewers. Um, this is First Media Niger TV. We are here live once again uh, with the Vice Chairman of Okobo Local Government Council, a former leader of um, the Okobo Legislative Council between 1999 to 2003, a former Secretary of Okobo Local Government Council between 2012 to 2014, 15, rather. Um, a former um, special assistant to the Honorable Deputy Speaker of Akwaibom State House of Assembly, and now the Vice Chairman of Okobo Local Government Council. Sir, we are, you're welcome to this um, series. Thank you very much. And, um, it's, I'm uh, glad to be with you. Yes, sir. So, um, how, tell us about yourself and your political journey so far. My name is Rada Rulasukwa Deacon Kofi from Mokodobo in Okobalu government area. By his grace, joined politics in 1998, where we have the PDP. And I've traveled that road, I became a counselor, a supervisor, I became a leader of council. And I moved further because there was an interest to save my people. Contested the chairmanship in 2003. By the grace of God, we had to harness our position because of the situation at that particular time where we could produce a chairman ever in a town of local government. That has been myself gone to school, I've done what people had by the grace of God. I found myself in the field of service, and I'm still serving till date, the Vice Chairman of Okobolu Government. Thank you so much, sir. Um, how has the local government um, administration um, under your immediate Governor, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Aquarium State, has been the running of the council so far. Well, the, <clears throat> the running of the local government is okay by my own assessment. Um, the local government is run by chairman and supervisors, vice chairman inclusive, councillors. It depends on the modus superandi upon which a particular chairman will want to run the local government that he finds himself. Uh, definitely the vice chairman of the local government are at the advisory positions as it has been enshrined in the local government administration. But if we look at it factually, the whole process and the procedural position has not been followed. But be that as it may, we will say it's good to go. Okay, um, thank you, sir. This is 2022, and within a couple of months, we'll get into 2023. And in Nigeria, the atmosphere, the the situation in the country has indicated that the 2023 election is um, by the corner. And Akwaibom State, as one of the states in Nigeria that is assumed to be one of the richest states today in Nigeria, in terms of um, external allocation from the federal government, is also gearing up to as a process of transition of um, government from the State House of Assembly to the governorship um, position in the state. So how has this process been in your state and from your assessment? Definitely, uh, <clears throat> the party we find ourselves, PDP, are not done badly. If one could assess this state as one of the states that was created by Ibrahim Baramasi Babangida, you know, you have to compare two things to be able to know which one is best at the situation of time. 
If you consider the Quagum Sir and Castina, say you will discover that the Quagum have been on a speed lane of development. I could recall when I was a child, I do come to Quagum State, which is the Rio as the capital today. It was almost a, a glorified village. And if you consider that from that time to today, you can at least say that there have been improvement. Yes, in terms of development, you know, one, no one government can come to think of getting the whole place developed. Uh, PDP has not done badly in Aquaman State in terms of road networks, in terms of other infrastructures. We today talk about the Ibom Air, Ibom, Ibom Air. Today we talk about uh, 10 lane. Today we can beat our chest to say that there are roads that are linking among the local government. Today we can talk about um, <clears throat> other issues, um, the factories, even though not evenly distributed, but we can talk about that. When we came to a point we say from Cross River, we were only having batteries industry, which was at the Corrupt Banner. We had a paint industry, today which we call the um, Peacock Paint. And there are a lot of modernizations in terms of the state as you look at the development of our Quebec state. We, are, we wouldn't call ourselves a liberal twist. Um, we still believe that a lot more are still expected. Then when you consider those of us that are from around the road we traverse from Rio to Oron, is still not in a good position. We are still believing that before the government of the day, why not this administration? He is going to look at that sector, that area. In fact, to be very candid, we are in dire need of that. And we are believing that Governor Dom Emmanuel, our governor, our beloved governor, will, as a matter of priorities, make sure that that route is given to all and other infrastructure. We have that of our cover, the road that is linking. Uh, Okobo to Okobo Beach Market, he has awarded, and we are believing, very assured that that road will be commissioned by him because uh, that road will have given so many persons food. Okay, um, thank you so much, sir. For okay, uh, 2023 is fast approaching, like I asked earlier, and in your local government, it's been in the news that the People's Democratic Party has a candidate for the State House of Assembly election. And other parties, political parties equally have their own candidate preparing for the same um, position. In your assessment of the present member of the House of Assembly from Okobo State constituency, what will be the quality of um, successor you want to uh, Okobo to um, get in the in next year or to elect in next year election? Well, having considered the the Umongo performance of our present House of Assembly member, it is incumbent on whoever is coming to walk above board. But from what I know, the man we are putting forward is not a novice in governance student union leader, the man that has been in council twice, that worked even with the present House of Assembly member, he knows the capacity of who he wants to succeed. He's been in the House of Assembly, he has a lot of experience which puts him above board, considering other members of other small, smaller parties. They get to know that PDP is a religion in our Kobolu government. I'm proudly to say that we began PDP in Okobo with the chairman of PDP. We are still standing at that uh, pedestal that we, we will always produce. We, if you can look at history carefully, you will discover that from 1998 till date, we have not suffered any defeat in terms of House of Assembly, in terms of chairman, and all that. And therefore, it cannot be now. In fact, if you consider the performance of the present as a assembly member, there is a livelihood 
the PDP will vote massively more than the last election. I have no doubt in my mind that the person having considered and having worked in the team of Felicia for those years I have mentioned wouldn't perform. He will perform. And I don't see who is contesting. It's only that in Nigeria, well, I wouldn't say it. I would have said all the contestants would have just come to congratulate Basi now before the real day of the election. Because definitely the indices is showing that PDP will vote massively for Basi right now. Okay, to further um, convince um, the electorate in Okawa local government on the choice on, on why they should vote for uh, the proposed Democratic Party State of Assembly candidate. Because it is a known fact that a lot of young voters have registered in the present um, of the recent voters' registration. Those who attained the age of 18 from 2019 to this year, and those who probably weren't interested in politics or in election, but as a result of um, a lot of issues in the country, they decided to get involved this, this time around. So how, what message do you have for those electorates who are voting for the first time, who may not really know, um, be convinced about your choice of candidacy or the party that you, that your, of your party as well? That's why we must go on massive orientation massive sensitization, massive voters' education. I've done that with my two children that had um, come to the age of voting. My first son has come to the vote of the age of voting, my second son has come, and they have registered. I've been talking to them. That is why recently we are going out to tell people, please go and get your voters' card. Please don't sell your vote. Please vote for the right candidate and vote for the right party. There's no way PDP in Aquaibum is, is a unique name. It's a, it's a household name. In fact, my son called PDP when he was just one year and three months. And so he got it into his bloodstream, having considered that those of us that leadership was given to us in PDP. We have not failed our constituents. We have not failed them. And uh, it, is, it is incumbent on us to continue to talk to the young ones who are coming to the age of 18, 20 for the next election. We don't have to force them. We have to talk to them. We have to lead them in a path of righteousness. Your voting PDP is a part of righteousness. As long as this state is concerned, I am having no doubt in my mind that Romoino, a pastor, a man of God, a man that have the consent of the people who are not winning this election. So it's to, for us to talk to the people. And then look, you have somebody that has the fear of God. The Bible says, if my people that are called by my name, and if the righteous rule, the people will rejoice. I see Mono as somebody that knows God. And I don't believe that he can fail the people. And so we will continue to talk until the very day that vote will be casted. Okay, sir, to wrap it up um, this series, a lot of um, defections has hit um, your party, the People's Democratic mm -hmm. Party, not just in <laughs> yes, not just in in Aquaibum state, but almost in all states in the country, we could hear about the rift currently going on at the national level between um, the governor of River State, His Excellency uh, Ezebu Yesonwike, and the national chairman of your party, and coming back home, in Okobolu government, where you come from, and where you serve as a vice chairman, and a long-standing member of the party, there's been a lot of defection. Notable among those who have defected is a former deputy South South Caucus chairman of the People's Democratic Party, who has left the party, and other former lawmakers who have also left the party, and other chapter chairmen, alleging that the party has not been fair and they have not been fairly treated uh, in terms of um, uh, benefit or reward uh, by the party, which is why they have defected from the People's Democratic Party to the new party where they belong today. So, 
is it true that they are, your party has not rewarded those who were in the party and have served in the party adequately? Well, you have you have asked and you have answered. Uh, a party is like we talked about. They are greed. Those men who probably are saying so, they, it is it is cultural greed. If somebody was given a chairman of a of a local government. He has an assembly of the local government. And then today, probably because he is no longer there, he now begins to castigate a platform upon which the students that have gone to school, some are abroad, they have built, built what you would have called uh, uh, good, good accommodations, uh, driven good cars, all in the name of PDP. Now, some have become commissioners. Some have become South South, like you have mentioned, and all this. And today they are saying that PDP is bad. In other words, what they are telling the people is that they are bad because they were given position of responsibility. Can they tell the people what they have done to the people? And I'm thinking that it is the fear of the people when the people will turn back to ask them, what have you really done to us? Why do you have this response? Probably that is the fear why they are going out. Now, talking about what happened in Nigeria, I want to say, in all honesty, that the only party that is left to rescue this country is PDP. I can say it loud and clear that when PDP was in governance in this nation, talk about the last Jonathan, you will discover a cup of rice was how much? A bag of rice was 7,000. Gas cooking was 260 naira gas. And you see, a lot of things were working in this country. When I do travel to Abuja, I pay flight from here to Abuja. How much was it? Sometimes 12,000 naira. 18,000 we shout. But today is how much? We talk about petrol. Jonathan left petrol with 87 naira. Today, petrol is 200 in some filling stations. Some states do not even have it. What are we talking about? When PDP was in governance in this nation, so many good roads were there. The Niger Delta people are making noise today. Uh, our president at that time had paid long sum for the construction of that place. The railway people are talking about Karuna, Kanu, Karuna, and Karuna Abuja. It was built by PDP. The Lagos Abuja, the Lagos Ibaran, it was done by, by PDP. In fact, APC only came to do what? To inaugurate. What have they done? We are dying. School children, my two children are at home for over eight years. No school. Things are getting worse. What about Naira? Today, Naira is causing 700, 760 in whatever you call parallel market. What about the real government policy of Nara? It's 400 and something. What are we talking about? Jonathan left Nara at 176 Nara per, per dollars. Things are getting bad. Nigerian, as and when PDP ruled this country, we were talking about the largest economy in Africa. We were talking about the first 20 countries in the world. Today, we are the poverty capital of Nigeria. Today, as I speak, today as I speak, nobody leave this country without being looked at. We are not the dead or full class citizens. People are dying, my brother. And so the only hope for Nigeria, I don't know why people are thinking of uh, people are deciding to go out. In fact, let me tell you the truth. Those who decide to leave that to leave PDP now to any other party, there are people that hate this country. The people that hate this country. Because if we consider the past and consider the present, then the only option we have is to go back to PDP. Because, yes, they talk about corruption. When we talk about corruption today, animals are the source of Nigerian corruption. The, the antelope is eating money. They might. The rat in a government snake and all these things are happening. We are talking about corruption. Even the very man that was given the responsibility 
to be in charge of Nigeria money, the accountant general. How much has he stolen? The EFCC chairman, and we talked about it, and so many underground corruption. The corruption of Nigeria becomes too endemic to be listened to. So my brother, I think the best is that uh, PDC, PDP had come up to say that they have made mistakes. If you give somebody that have made mistakes, on a particular issue that he knows doing best, he does the better thing. Now, don't forget, today we can sit down here, we talk to somebody in America, it's, an, it's Nigeria, PDP that brought it. Today we can talk about one single uh, current uh, accounting system, it was done by PDP. EFCC was done by PDP. SCPC was done by PDP. Let this government come to tell us what they have done differently. Let me talk about fight corruption. I can beat my chest to say that when PDP was in governance, we have over 7,000 megawatts of electricity. Today, the last count, they said APC I've got to was 3,500 something megawatt. We have had failures of electricity in Nigeria in recent three months. Is it not seven times? What are we talking about? Instead of us increasing, we are de decreasing, we are deteriorating. We're not going forward. We have gone back over 25 steps. My brother, there's no reason to for anybody to think about uh, dumping PDP for APC. That's my position. So Thank you, sir. Um, so our viewers, in case you just tune in, this is First Media Niger TV, and we are here with the Vice Chairman, Executive Vice Chairman of Okobo Local Government Council himself, a former Secretary of Council, a former Leader of Council, a former Special Assistant to the Deputy Speaker of Akwaiwa State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Dikinasu Kuo Kufi. Sir, before we part this series, what's your message to the Nigerian voters and those voters in Akwaibom and Okobo local government um, area that you come from? Well, my message to voters is that they should vote the right people and those right persons across the PDP board, they are having the experience to deliver. Vote somebody you know can deliver. Vote Omoino. Vote Basi Ragman. Vote Matan. Vote Samson Ekon. Vote Atiku. Vote all the PDP members. They have the capacity. They have what it takes to rescue this country from the door drop we find ourselves. Thank you very much, sir, for this wonderful time you've given to us. Thank you very much, sir.